Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video we're doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows Home Server 2011 in VirtualBox. Now, the install of this operating system is actually, it's very simple, but uh, there is a requirement here that kind of gets uh, some of the installs, you know, if somebody just tries to do it on their own without knowing, um, it'll come up with an error. And I'll show you what I mean here later on in the video. Um, but uh, should be, other than that, fairly a simple tutorial here to do. Uh, but figured I'd get this out. This was uh, a recommended video to do uh, through one of my comments. Uh, shout out to Diamond L for the suggestion of this video. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get right into it here. Um, so there'll be links in the description. Of course, VirtualBox will be down there. Uh, the latest version at the time of this video is 6.1.38. Um, you can download it for your specified OS if you do not already have it. And then uh, the second link there will be a ISO link from a archive.org web link here. Um, Windows Home Server 2011, you can download the ISO image here. Um, shout out to Esoteric username. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, credit to him for the ISO. Um, so those will be in the description there. That should be all you need for the um, install here. So uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get VirtualBox opened up here. We'll create a new virtual machine and I'm just gonna call this Windows um, Home Server 2011. And for the version of this, you'll wanna make sure it's selected on um, either Windows 7 or Windows 2008. Um, I'm just going to do Windows 7 64 bit and then hit next. And then it's going to ask how much RAM you want to dedicate to it. I'm going to do four gigs instead of two, but two should be fine if you leave it at that. And then hit next. And then uh, we're going to create a virtual hard disk. It does say the recommended size is 32 gigs. Um, we'll get to that in just a second there because this is the thing that I meant about the requirement. So pick your uh, whichever file type you'd like. And you can pick either one of these options and hit next. And then for the uh, hard disk, you actually do need to have a minimum of 160 gigabytes dedicated to this in order for it to install. Um, otherwise, if you have anything under this, it will um, give you an error at the beginning of the setup that will not let it proceed. Um, so you need to have at least 160 gigs on the drive in order for the install to work. So make sure you have at least 160. You can add more if you'd like. Uh, I'll just do 160 for the purpose of this and hit create. And there is the machine created down here. Uh, once that's created, we'll need to go into settings. And this is where we'll get the ISO inserted. So we'll go to storage and go to the empty disk, hit the disk over here. And mine's in the list, but uh, if you just do choose a disk file, um, it should be called Windows Home Server 2011. And then hit okay. And then we'll go ahead and start the machine. And so it'll bring us up on the machine here and it should boot up into the operating system here. So it'll get us into the setup. You see Windows Home Server 2011. Um, for this, we're gonna do a new installation. So we'll click on that and it will proceed. And then we'll just wanna make sure we select our disk and make sure that checkbox here um, is selected and then the install button should be able to come up. So just hit install. It'll say setup is starting. And then we'll begin the process of the installation here. So of course we'll go through these options kind of as seen in previous versions of Windows such as Windows 7, Windows Vista, um, Windows 8, things like that, and Windows Server versions at that time like 2008 and 2012. Um, so let this run through here, um, and then it should eventually bring us up to a restart point. So I'm going to let that sit here. Um, it may sit on expanding Windows files at 0% for quite a bit, so just let it sit here for a bit, and it will eventually go up. So I will let this sit here, and then I'll come back to you guys once it's uh, kind of getting close to finish here um, on our first restart point. All right, so we've come up to the restart point here. Um, so we'll go ahead and reboot the machine. And make sure you do not press any key to boot from CD or DVD or you'll go into that loop. It's something I usually remind uh, with many of the videos that involve Windows and have that prompt come up. Um, after the reboot here, it will eventually prompt up to that second part of the setup screen here. So 
Um, you'll see it'll come up with the boot screen there after a bit. Have that boot loader there. And we'll say setup is updating registry settings. And as said, it will uh, start back up and get back into this uh, completing installation uh, prompt there. So um, again, just kind of another process of sitting and letting it do its thing. Um, and then eventually it will come up to another restart point. So just kind of let it sit here and complete this uh, install. And I'll come back to you guys once uh, that it's getting close to finish again or hitting that restart point again. All right, uh, up to the next re restart point here, it'll come up with a message saying that it'll continue after restarting. So um, just let it reboot. And again, do not press any key to boot from the CD or DVD here. And then should load back up into the uh, set up here the bootloader will come up eventually and then we'll uh, continue through the uh, setup here so um, now the bootloader coming up here and then the setup window should come up So I'll prompt up here, preparing for uh, first use here on the setup. So I'll run a few through uh, through a few of these things before it prompts up with our next window. So we'll let it uh, go ahead and load through here. And eventually it will come up and say preparing your desktop uh, or say welcome and preparing your desktop here. And you can see at the bottom Windows Home Server 2011 and eventually should bring us to the desktop there. It did kind of flash there for a little bit. Um, and then it kind of will proceed through the installation. So it will load through on this and then eventually uh, once this is done, it will go ahead and bring us to the desktop. So we'll let it run through and get to that point. And eventually should get up to the screen here to choose your country and region and your keyboard layout, time and currency, all those information here. So uh, make sure that's set accordingly and hit next. And it's gonna have us verify date and time. So just uh, go ahead and hit uh, next i think actually to change the time zone you can do that in here too so um, if you want to set that and then go ahead and hit next and it's going to have us uh, accept the license terms here so check that box and go ahead and hit next and then it should ask for a product key or will ask for a product key you can skip that by hitting next it's going to ask you to name the uh, server here so i'm just going to call it win server 2011 and password is not required here by the looks of that uh just kidding it is required so go ahead and type in a password here and then you just need to uh, put in a hint so once that is through if i can get the passwords to match here there we go. And then on this, you can do any one of these. I usually just do use recommended settings. And then it's gonna go ahead and do some preparation of the uh, server here. Now this says it can take up to 30 minutes. Um, since it's in a VM, it may go quicker than that, but I would not be surprised if it runs um, that long, but I would think it should go fairly quick. So uh, let it run through the preparation here. And then um, I'm gonna guess it should reboot here. It's, it says it does have it uh, restart more than once. So. I'll let it run through here and I'll uh, come back to you guys once it's hitting a restart point here. All right, so it has gone ahead and rebooted here. So um, go ahead and just let it continue to run through. It should boot back up um, after the reboot here. So we'll let it go ahead and come up.
And as you can see, it is loading up the OS here. And it should automatically log in to the accounts. Say preparing your desktop. And it has gotten us logged on to the desktop here. So um, that concludes that part of that setup here. And, uh, you know, we'll run through all those things and it will end up getting it up here. So um, it'll give you a caution in the background as well. But um, if you do run uh, the properties here and I'm also going to open up Winver and actually it looks like it logged us in but it looks like it's also going through some additional installation here so um, I guess you did get kind of a glimpse of the desktop there and then it will prompt through the uh, rest of this installation so we'll go ahead and let it continue and I'll come back to you guys once it's on another restart point or getting through the end of the uh, portion of the setup here and as you can see it will continue through the uh, prepa uh, preparing your server here um, so again, just kind of let it continue to run through here and again, we'll just, uh, let it keep running through and we'll come back once it hits the uh, next restart point. All right. So we've got to the next restart point here. So as you can see, it is loading the, uh, loading screen here, and then it will eventually come up with the logon page again, and we'll get us logged into the desktop. So it's just a matter of kind of giving this some time. This does take some time to run through the uh, setup here and finish through that. So uh, just let it continue booting up here and eventually it should prompt with the setup screen. Uh, there we go, logging on to Windows Home Server 2011. And then it will eventually have us log into this here. So um, just let it continue to log on here. Um, I'll come back once it's at the desktop. And it will again continue through the installation. So I'm um, just, again, kind of playing the waiting game here. So just continue to let it run through. I'll come back to you guys once it's at the next restart point. And it will eventually come up with this window here saying that your server is now ready to use so go ahead and hit close and it should bring us to the desktop here and for good this time um so you are now able to explore the operating system here as you can see if we go into the properties uh, you can see windows home server 2011 does have service pack one installed with it um, and obviously not activated um, since there's no activation um, but it does have it all installed here and if we do a winver um, should you say here yep windows home server 2011 um, as for guest editions here if we go ahead and insert the image and i'm not too sure if it will prompt automatically if not um, should be able to go into here and try and run it. So we go through the prompts. And try and install here. Does look like it does get it installed. So if we go ahead and hit finish to reboot it. And it will reboot the machine here.
And we'll, of course, go through the loading screen once more. And then eventually, of course, again, it will bring us to the logon page, uh, you know, of logging on and eventually get to the desktop here. So and I have noticed, of course, throughout the setup here and just with using this, that it does seem to kind of take a, a while to go ahead and get things booted up here. So just be aware of that when you are um, working through with this operating system here. Um, so as you can see, we'll go ahead and get us through booting up here. I'll have us go ahead and hit uh, control alt delete. So you can do input keyboard and insert control alt delete. And we'll have us enter in our password that we have set for the administrator account. And it doesn't seem to be taking it for some reason here. Looks like it is having some issues with that. So let me go ahead and we'll get logged in here. Okay, so I've gotten into the desktop here now after um, getting logged in. And it does look like that guest editions has installed. So um, you can certainly adjust the screen resolution here. And... Um, the audio service for audio may not be running by default, so if you click on it, uh, you should be able to get a prompt there to go ahead and um, get it to start running there. But it certainly can adjust the uh, display resolution here and should be good on that. So um, with that all being said here, that is the video tutorial on how to install Windows Home Server 2011 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, um, or if this did help you out at all, certainly can leave a like down below. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, you can subscribe down below and hit the post notification bell to keep up to date on my content. And as always, uh, if you do have any future video ideas, you can leave a comment down below here with any suggestions as well. Once again, this is a video tutorial on how to install Windows Home Server 2011. Thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.